and try to get other recruits there. But he got tired of that losing that first year, man. So he uh, he went, he ended up going out to USC, and that's where he uh, ended up getting drafted from out of USC. But um, the kid, man, this is how I think they should do with him, man. You got a smooth point guard. I think what the point guard should do is bring the ball down the court and give it to him because this guy can take you off the dribble. He can see over other players to make um, good passes. And, you know, they move. And if he drives, he's kicking. Or either dump it down to Aldridge because I feel that uh, the point guard they got is nice and he's smooth. But when it comes to team oriented ball, setting up the half-court offense, especially in the playoff, Anderson is going to be your man. But see, that's their team. I can't get out there and coach them. Popovich got a lot of championships. So, I mean, all I can do is sit back and um, see what happened, man. But, uh, Black Man, you know, you, you the man, man. You came on here with Chief Rocket, talk a little basketball. But what team are you looking for, before I let you go, what team are you looking for to do something in the playoff, man? And who you going with to take it all the way home? Well, I, I like the Heat in the East. I think they can be dangerous in the first round or second round. I don't think they uh, got a go-to guy to go any further than that, but they uh, match up well with other teams in the East. And uh, I'm an OKC fan because I love Russell Westbrook. So I'm going right. to see what they do and see if uh, all these critics of Melo can uh, shut up in the playoffs. I think he's going to have some huge games for them when it, when it counts. Right, I don't right. Know if they've been enough. Yeah, Melo, um, I think Melo is starting to feel, he's starting to feel that extra gear, man, because the other night, he got feisty with Duran, he got feisty with Green, and somebody else he got feisty with, man. Uh, Melo tired of people pushing him around, and he's not getting a foul call and whatnot, so he's just taking it to you now. He just being, I seen him go to the hole the other night and put one down, or he missed one going to the hole, but he got fouled, man. Um, I think it's time to give Melo uh, respect. I see somebody in the chat room, um, John, the company man, said uh, Houston all the way. What you feel about Houston, man? Houston is, I, I just took a deep side seat before I started dancing. Houston is <laughs> a great regular season team. I think they've improved their team. Right. But that style of launching threes and you know, James Harden at least tried to this this year. I just seen him melt down so much in the playoffs from uh, Golden State two years ago. You know, I give him a pass on the finals against the Heat because he was young and he wasn't the man on that team. Durant and Westbrook were, but he right. melted down last year. First, he disappeared in that game. He didn't. Even, he did one of them Kobe where Kobe did against Phoenix that one year in '07 where he just decided not to shoot the ball in the second half in Game uh -huh. Seven. Yeah, James Harden did that, but Kobe did it to prove a point that we're gonna lose if I don't take forty shots. James Harden right. just he just disappeared. I mean, I just don't think at the end of the day they got enough defense to beat Golden State. I mean, they can match them on three point lines, but uh, you know everybody think Golden State shoot a lot of threes. They get a lot of layups too when you overplay Woo! and they do those back cuts. Yeah, yeah, they definitely just, do, man. Houston should get to the East the Western Conference Finals, uh -huh. um, but. I just, I mean, they're going to have to prove. I, I hope they can win. I like to see somebody different than Golden State. Right. Um, but right now, it would be hard for me to pick Houston based on what I've seen with <clears throat> I got two questions for you. I'm going to let you go. First question, since you said you're a Miami Heat fan, do you think bringing Dwayne Wade back will make a difference for the Heat? Because, you know, Dwayne Wade just played with LeBron. And a couple of these players, that's not the new ones, but the ones that was on the team. Don't you know Dwayne Wade can tell his players how to guard them or what they need to do or when they should trap LeBron? Do you think Miami can upset Cleveland? I don't think they got enough to upset Cleveland because this version of D-Wade is not the D-Wade in 09 or through 2012 where he was not that far behind LeBron at the same point. Right. Now all he can do is miss those guys. The one guy he can help on the Heat that's been kind of an enigma, uh -huh. um, especially this season, is Whiteside. And right. He get Whiteside, when they, when they first announced to him that D-Wade was coming back, they were interviewing him, he hadn't heard it. He asked the guy, was he joking? He stopped talking to a reporter and looked around to other people from the Heat media staff. said, are you serious? And he was like, I love D-Wade. D-Wade coming back? 
So then get Whiteside to start playing like that monster he was three years ago in that Toronto series before he got hurt. And they could be tough in the East because they got a lot of interchangeable parts on the perimeter, you know, with uh, Goran Dragic, uh, James Johnson, Winslow, um, all those young guys, you know, Wade played with most of them, so they look up to them. So they keep his minutes to 15, 20, and don't try to think they're going to be able to play 30 or something like that. Think it's old D-Wade. Vintage the way they'll be all right, but the guy he might be able to inspire his white side because he's been kind of very up and down this year with Spoelstra sitting the whole fourth quarter sometimes. Right. Okay. When I mention Zaza, what you think? Uh, the dirtiest player since uh, Bruce Bowen. There you go. Because he damn no try. He tried to hurt Russell Wilson. I mean Russell Westbrook the other night, and and that was and the league yeah, should give him a fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was a seriously delayed fall, and you got to look at the, his history. Um, right. Remember, he took a fun out last year when they were putting that hammer on the Golden State in game one of that series. Right, um, that's why I could play the rest of the series. I mean, Spurs competed, but it was it was pretty much over there. Um, right. Same thing with Paulie. Every time you shot a jumper, he's the guy that would come under you to, you know, get ready to box you out, but he wouldn't give you any room to land, so he would, you know, roll you, roll your ankle, Kobe, Ray Allen, those guys. That's right. why that rule got a year later, but that was that, they should have called the Bruce Bowen rule because he was notorious for coming under shooters, acting like he was boxing out or challenging the shot, but he could see where you were going to land, so. But I blame the OKC Thunder. I don't want Westbrook. Westbrook shouldn't have to go out there that's not the old days like Jordan can kind of you know elbow through your chin when he's in the post shoot the jumper and get you back in the right. the game they gotta send one of them dudes on the bench 10th 11th man in there what's the boy from Kansas Nick Collison send him in right. he's never had a reputation being dirty don't play anymore send him in and take somebody or take Josh off the two of you or take uh, one of the Warriors out one of their star players get them hard with an old right. game foul take right. the ejection you stop all that stuff because you can't afford, I mean, not only for OKC this season, but they're paying Russ over $220 million in the next four or five years. Right. They can't be messing up. <laughs> you know, OKC's investing. If I was management, I would send him out there. Russ is going to get that money whether he plays another game or if he's injured for his career. It's just right. a matter of the insurance to pay out, you know, a lot of that money for OKC, uh, the ownership. But if I'm ownership, I go to the team and say, hey, this is this can't happen. You guys, right. somebody got to go. And I go to the Billy Donovan. You got to send somebody out there to end this because he's done that before. I mean, he, he whacked Russ in the last game where they blew OK, yeah. where they blew Golden State out in the uh, Oak. He got right. whacked in the head. Just right. the fact, you know, they blew them out so nobody ever paid attention to him. But, you know, we had too many stars getting injured this year, you know, on regular plays for guys to be doing stuff like that. He can't play. I mean, he can't play at all. So, I mean, hey. the, the OKC has to handle that. They can't cry. Rush didn't have to talk to the media or right. to the ref. That's the thing. You can't let that happen. See, people miss them old Nick teams. Cause we have motherfuckers that going to put you on your ass if you fuck with one of our star players, man. Hey, black man, man, I'm glad you came on, my brother. You can come on the show anytime you got some time. You know, whenever I come on, you welcome to come on. And talk, man, because I'm um, on Saturdays. Me and Ad Facts, I seen him in the chat room a little earlier. You know, we got a show that come just gonna be coming on every Saturday. Uh, Ad Facts just uh, cleared the schedule so we can do some shows on Saturday. But anyway, man, I thank you for coming on, man. And uh, you know, hey, man, keep doing your thing down there in Tampa, man. I'll be down there. Um, and that's my word, brother. We'll talk. All right, brother. All right, man. That was angry black man out of Tampa. Uh, Tiffany. Poodle from Portland just stepped up in here. Thank you for coming in. Her Portland Trail Blazers look like they want to make some noise towards the playoff time. We got Deacon Dale from the DMV up in here. You know what I'm saying? He got two of the sorriest teams in sports. The Baltimore Orioles and the Ravens. Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tiffany uh, <laughs> Sports and Hills. Uh, I'm sorry about that. You know, that's her team too, the Ravens. Uh, we also got 334 Bama Boy just stepped in. He said, sending them goons for his ass like John Chaney used to do. Yeah, Chaney was a hell of a fine coach out of Temple, man. And Chaney didn't like how Cal Perry uh, was playing on uh, his boys, man. And uh, he was like, man, he's about to beat Cal Perry ass in the press conference. And, you know, 
he felt bad because his daughter seen the whole thing, and you know, he uh, his daughter was going to uh, school, and you know, you're gonna catch a lot of grief behind that, about how your father acted. But uh, if I was him, I told my daughter, baby, I'm sorry, I'll never do that in front of you again, but I'm not going to deny that I wanted to really whoop his ass because I was about to whoop his ass. <laughs> Deacon Dell talking about go play in the traffic, Chief. Deacon Dell, that's where you live at in traffic. Uh, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, tonight is the Doug Stewart show. Remember I said earlier, this is the Two Live Stews platform on Doug Stewart. He'll be on tonight from 7 to 10 doing his thing. Um, Trey from the Barbershop Podcast was in earlier at Squad Affiliate. I wanted to mention him when Microwaves on there. We got Shelly B in here. Uh, Shelly B showing some assets. What's up, Shelly B? Thank you for coming in. But I'd like to make a, a call uh, before we go off because, you know, the Fox and Rock the Box will be on at 12 o'clock. I'd like to make a call. I want to welcome somebody um, here in the A and whatnot and, uh, you know, ask them. Um, Ask them something about, I want their opinion on something, too. So I hope they answered the phone. I hope um, uh, they're not on a call or anything like that. So uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, this has been a good morning. Uh, coming back off a long week. Um, since not doing no show since last Tuesday. So, you know, um, I'm just trying to get back in gear because tomorrow I'm working on getting them people on here tomorrow. And that's for real. I also had another guy that works with me. Um, was supposed He's a supervisor. He's supposed to come on. Oh, man, good basketball brand. He coaches a, a school that Dwight Howard went to. He coaches that school players. Uh, well, right now he's an athletic director, but he used to be a big-time coach too and whatnot. Okay, I guess um, they're busy. But anyway, it's, it's all good. But uh, yeah, this is the number one Chief Rocket Jersey Vern recap show. Uh, <laughs> the number's 404-618-2119. I have about uh, at least 18 minutes left in the show. Uh, yeah, Andre Southwest Christian Academy, yeah. He's the AD down there. He used to coach. He brought them to a couple of championships, and he got a lot of boys in the college basketball Right now, matter of fact, I think one, one or two of his players is in the NBA now. But uh, <laughs> Shelly B, you need to stop. <laughs> Woo, boy, uh, y'all rough. <laughs> yeah, man. But um, yeah, college basketball is about to wind down. We're about to go into this here um conference tournaments. Matter of fact, some should be starting this weekend. For some of the lower conference, um, all next week there will be games going on. And next weekend, because March Madness is here. And this is the best time for college basketball. If you're not a college basketball fan, I don't know how you cannot watch Martin Madness and uh, be so involved. Because that is like non-stop, heart-wrenching, heart-stopping basketball, man. You know, your team could have been... One of the best teams in college basketball and get knocked out in their conference championship and then go to the uh, NCAA tournament, you know, hoping that things don't go wrong for them. Uh, Mocha said Jeff Fox going to have Chuck D and Kenny Anderson on the show today on his birthday. That's right. It's also the Fox and Rocks the Box birthday today. Jeff Fox's birthday today. He having a celebrity type show today. I think he told me he's taking call-ins, but he also got Chuck D and Kenny Anderson on there. Chuck D from the goddamn famous ass. Oh. <laughs> and also Kenny uh, Anderson, uh, Georgia Tech, and he came out of New York, uh, basketball player. But public enemy Chuck D is on today. And you know what? Um, I told you a story about Chuck D, man. Chuck D go to uh barbershop I used to go to 
Um, you know, I switched up Bob's.